Hi, this is Nathan Gray, and you're watching Talking Records. I could set my watch by you. You know all the battles I can't win. But the rules are always changing. The distractions stay the same. And the game begins again. I like the tongue-in-cheek nature of the title of, of this album mm -hmm. as, as we are all a uh, constant work in progress and while uh, some people have this deeply rooted need to understand their own inner workings, others often get stuck in this negative state of mind. Uh, yeah. Is it one of your goals with this album to, to inspire them? Absolutely. I think that a lot of times uh, we get stuck into these negative spaces uh, out of fear. I think that most of, uh, I mean, I would have to say all of the, prom the problems that we run into in this world all stem from fear. Uh, it's that base instinct that creates anger, hatred, fear, uh, you know, greed, things of that nature. It all stems from fear. So if we take that down from like a, a bigger world like the macro and bring it to the micro into our own lives, um, we get stuck a lot of times because we become afraid of the process. You know, and that we feel that this process needs some form of end to it. It needs a goal. For me, finding that the goal is actually this sort of cyclical thing. There's no end to it. You just live your life in this state of being, in this more positive state of being. Uh, and that doesn't mean you don't have dark and negative days. That means you work through those in a more positive mindset. I think this goes nicely with this, uh, this sentence, uh, freedom is the mercy you give to yourself when you stumble and then rise up ten times stronger. Yes. I think this sentence encapsulates the spirit yeah. of this album. It's so important to forgive yourself when you mess up. Because we set goals all the time, like, I'm not going to get fucked up tonight, I'm not going to do this, I'm not going to do that. And then you're going to do it, you know what I mean, it's going to happen. And, and when you do it, the knowledge that you can forgive yourself, that you can go, okay, let's get back up, you know? Uh, and, and that even goes with deeper things like uh, depression and things, chemical imbalances, things of that nature, to where these are things we can't necessarily control. And we're gonna have days where we're just ass out on the couch all day. And we need to make sure that we don't punish ourselves for that. That we understand that we're human beings. That we're going to have days that aren't gonna look Instagram pretty, you know what I mean? And, and realize that that's okay. It's okay to feel, it's okay to have days where you just spend the day crying, you know, and feeling miserable. But that, that's going to end. And that we can, we can live with that and say, okay, that was a bad day. Let's see if we can make the next day better. So this is all about not giving up. Yes. Not saying, okay, mm -hmm. it, will be like, it will be like this forever yes. and get stuck in it. And not only that, but also not putting a smiley face on everything. On your bad days, not going, I'm good, everything's fine, fuck that. You know, a lot of times we, we try to act happy when we're not to make other people feel comfortable. There's no purpose to that. It's no, there's no reason to lie to people about how you're feeling because you don't want to put them out. This ties nicely with, this, with the theme of the song Never Alone, right? Mm -hmm. Where you emphasize the importance of the community. Yes, always important for us to act not only, let's say, within the confines of our scene, but outside of that. And, and start thinking more community-minded within our cities, our states, our countries, our world. And, and realizing that we can build, you know, we're all individuals and we all have our own things going on. But we can build some form of community worldwide to where we, we are more understanding of people's emotions, more understanding that everything's not going to fit into this tiny little box, you know? And just that alone 
can make people feel a lot more free and a lot less alone in this whole uh, crazy world. More understanding. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but also we need to, uh, with that idea of compassion, and with that idea just on a personal basis, allowing that to stem out into our politics as well, as people having access to health care, to help themselves with mental issues and stuff, because it's, it's, it's fine to say, hey, well, you know, be more positive in this and build community, but it's not gonna help if people don't have access to the medications they need and to the health care that they need. Yeah, since you mentioned politics, do you think it is important for an artist to take sides, especially since politics is so insanely dividing, and you know yeah. that you're gonna, that you might um, anger half of your fan base? Yeah. I think it's important to take sides in the correct manner. Uh, I don't think there's anything in lashing out. Uh, we need to be creative. If we are really going to change the world, and we're really going to show people that perhaps their political side does not have their best interest in mind, we cannot be condescending, we cannot be um, attacking. Uh, it has to be like, look, you have more in common than me than you have with them. It's more on that level. And we have to start with the personal. All starts on the personal. Um, <clears throat> because that's what politics are. It's people in a position to change the world, you know? Uh, so we need to influence that. We need to influence because all of this, uh, we see a lot right now, there's this rise of <clears throat> bigotry and this populist like, you know, oh, tough guy bullshit. That starts with the toxic nature of what we allow in our society. That just, it's just, it's a reflection of us. So if we are allowed to, if we are able to dismantle that in and of itself, we will have less of that in politics. You're always gonna have people who are afraid and they're gonna blame immigrants, they're gonna blame, you know, whatever they need to in order to feel safer about themselves. But I feel like a majority of those people are still reachable. I really believe that. There are some people, fuck them, it doesn't, you know what I mean? You're never gonna reach them, it is what it is, but that is the minority. And I swear to you that's the minority. Uh, I think we get tricked sometimes by the internet that these people are somehow the majority, and they are not. Most people sincerely want what's best. Sometimes it's because minority is the one that screams the loudest. And yeah, I, yeah. It seems like they are majority. Without a doubt, and I think it's also very easy for people to take advantage. That minority takes advantage of the rest of us. They find our fear, they find our hurts, and they find where we're suffering and they go, these people are doing this to you. These people are doing this. Not us, not us, we're the good guys, we're helping you. Always be very, very, very careful when someone comes to you and points at someone else. Uh, so since life is indeed a constant work in progress, how would you compare uh, Nathan Gray from Feral Hints era mm -hmm. to Nathan Gray now, uh, freshly a few weeks after releasing work in title? Mm -hmm. I would say that there's a lot more um, acceptance and joy in what I do. Uh, I think Feral Hymns was an album I had to get through uh, because I really needed to lay it out on the table. That was sort of like cutting myself open and spilling it all out. And now working title is more sort of picking the pieces back up, putting them back in where they belong and leaving some of it out, you know? Uh, and, and in that, um, not just wallowing in the shame and the darkness of it all, but allowing myself to realize that I can, I can speak on darker topics while also speaking on more positive topics and blending them together in the whole life experience. It's like you're building and reinventing yourself in a way. Without a doubt, yes. Your solo efforts are more uh, stripped back and intimate mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to the high energy of uh, Boy Six Fire concerts. Mm -hmm. Uh, so having your emotions more on display makes it more difficult or is it more empowering to perform in front of people? Much more empowering and as you'll see tonight there's a lot more energy to the set. I've done a lot in um, making it more in the direction of working title and that album with the guitars and the drums and everything uh, with, with moments of bringing it back down with the acoustic guitar and stuff uh, because that's really the future of what I want to do is creating exactly what I'm talking about. That 
ebb and flow of the emotion and the, the life experience uh, with a positive on all, over all of it. So I think that in that, in creating that, it's very life affirming. Not only that, but it's me, you know? Like it's Nathan Gray. Everything lives and dies by my name on this. You know, it's not something where I can go, oh yeah, that album wasn't that good because of that guy. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's all on me. So I have to be very cautious with the band members I pick the music that I put out, what I do with that music, the, you know, what, what some people would call the brand of it all, um, where I hate that term, but I don't know what else to call it, you know, um, in how people view what I'm doing. In your lyrics, you speak from your personal experience, but at the same time, you keep them relatable. Mm -hmm. So now, after a few weeks since the release of Walking Tide, what kind of feedback do you get from, from your fans? It has been awesome. I have, in the past, you know, you do, you do tours and you get a lot of feedback and people sending pictures and speaking about it. I have found that on this tour over every tour I've ever done in my life, I have not been able to keep up with it. Like normally I can sort of keep up, it's a lot, but you, you take an hour and you just go through it all. Uh, because I'm, I'm someone that tries to keep up on those things. I want people to know that I care about their opinion. Um, but I, I haven't been able to keep up on this tour. It's been amazing, like just the feedback that's been happening. Because I think a lot of people come out to the shows and uh, they don't know what to expect. And then they get this, um, this experience and it really seems to touch them on a completely different level than they were expecting. And it's awesome. It's been great. Uh, even in the moments where it sort of comes down and we all sort of get very deep and I, I've cried a couple of times on stage as the people in the audience and then we bring it all up and we smile and we laugh and we dance together and it's just such a beautiful experience. The beautiful thing that artists can do is to take like some negative experience from, from his or her um, past mm -hmm. and turn it into a song to, to be a voice to those who might not have it. Mm -hmm. So it's like you did for example with the song Echoes from Carol Hens. Is this how you de define a meaning of art? That this is what art means for you? Without a doubt, yes. Um, I think that art is meant to inspire, it's meant to heal, it's not meant to be just something that's a product. Um, and when it becomes a product, it's worthless. Um, I think that if we, if we as artists do not give of ourselves, then what's the art worth at that point? If it's not a piece of you, if it's not something that uh, comes deep from within, and causes others to feel inspired as well, then it's just a catchy hook to make some money. And who cares about that at the end of the day? I mean, we all need to make a living, but you can do that by inspiring people and bringing them into the situation. I, I never, 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 never lie to my audience. That is one thing that I think is grotesque and I hate it. I always want them to feel like they're part of what I do. Um, and, and, and obviously, I need money to do that. So that's great. When they buy merchandise, when they pay at the door, things like that, that helps me continue to do what I'm doing. So there is that aspect of it. But if you're not caring for the larger aspect, then that's not gonna happen. You know, unless you're like a Disney band or something. It's just not. Awesome. Okay, the last question they always like to ask is um, what is your musical guilty pleasure? Something that your fans may be surprised that you like to listen to? Um, one of my favorite things to listen to right now is Youngblood oh, uh, okay. from the UK. He's awesome. I love 21st Century Reliability. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that, you know what? It's funny because when you get older, your immediate reaction to young kids that are a little weird and like whatever is like, oh God. I've tried to turn that on myself because that happens every generation and it's always boring and ridiculous, you know, because you get, you get angry at what you can't be, you know? So I, I really embraced, and, and you know what really made me love that guy was watching videos of his fans talk about what he says and what he does and how it affects them. And I was thinking about how all these young kids who are maybe freaks in their school or whatever that feel acceptance through what he does, that's my kind of people. And I love that he, 
he toys with the whole idea of gender and sexuality and things of that as well. Just because that's something that I feel is very important for the younger crowd coming up, that they don't get locked into the same uh, suffering that we did coming up, where people felt very reserved about their sexuality or gender roles or things of that nature. And I love it that like the, the youth now are coming in with this, fuck you, I'm gonna be who I am. Despite the political turmoil, the, the now times are better than ever for uh, for this kind of yeah acceptance, right. openness. Mm -hmm. they, they, that's what people say when they want you to believe it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I feel like the older generation always goes, oh, well, see how much better it is now than it was then? Yeah, but it's not great. You know what I mean? You can say that it's more open, but you know why it's more open? It's more open because people are saying, fuck you, you don't get to put me in a box. If they were allowed to, they still would, you know? And that is the older generation's way of saying, just accept what you have and shut up. Mm -hmm. And I don't like that at all. I think that it's very important for no one to listen to that. Never listen to someone when they say, it's much better now. Fuck you, it can be better. It can always be better, you know? Hello everyone, thank you for watching my interview with Nathan Gray. My name is Marek and this is Talking Records, a channel with band interviews, music reviews and some concert photography. If you liked it, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and I will see you next time.